सो वाइज अगर आप भी मॉक इंटरव्यू देना चाहते हैं तो वीडियो के डिस्क्रिप्शन में आपको एक लिंक मिलेगा जहाँ पे आपको गूगल फॉर्म को जाकर फिल करना है एंड आपका इंटरव्यू स्केड्यूल हो जाएगा एंड इसके अलावा अगर आपको कोई भी कोर्स जावा पाइथन जावा स्क्रिप्ट इसके अंदर अगर आपको कोई भी कोर्स देखना है तो प्लीज़ आप यूट्यूब पर जाकर ट्राई दे पर विजिट कर सकते हैं ओके एंड लेट्स ट्रैक टू द इंटरव्यू So hi Shubham, how are you? Yeah, doing great. Thank you. Okay. What about you? Just fine. Okay. So shall we start? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So can you please tell me about your work experience, about yourself, and what you have yeah. done in your last company or in your current company you are working on some yeah. projects, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So as you know, my name is Shubham Kumar Sahu. Hmm. From past two years, two two years, two months, I'm working as a Java full stack developer. Okay. I've started my career with Deloitte. So there, I was working on a healthcare. application it it was a web based application mm. so i was working as a java full stack developer with angular there okay so mostly we used to get new screens we used to develop that and if we have to add any existing feature in an existing screen that we used to do that so apart from this full stack development with angular i got a chance to work on ci cd pipelines also okay. so earlier we were doing manual deployment manual build everything like if suppose i build any feature now i'll build it in my local and i'll go to the server and i'll deploy it manually so i got the chance that we can automate it using jenkins so there we are not using any pipelines it a simple jenkins of we are we have created simple jenkins of and there we were using svn not git okay. so we we used to push our code and from there i got to learn about little bit devops how we deploy there we were using ibm web server so how how to connect to ibm web server through mm. jenkins so there i got exposure to full stack development with java also i got exposure and it was like jenkins also little bit aws also then after 2 years i thought that ha let's try anyway i have completed 2 years so let's try for some more companies so after that i started searching for companies and then i got this ford so i thought okay let's anyway i have experience service based so okay. let's experience product we also so i came into this and i have joined last last to last week also last okay. to last week only this company and here we are there like in medelwit we were like actually dealing with max to max at a time 50 or 100 or 200 or 500 people we use our application but here i am working as a only back end complete back end developer okay but the application that we are creating it has around 300 k records 400 k records and that we have to process so okay. here i'll deal with bulk data and i have just started it so i'm just going through the code mm. i'm just understanding what our project what is our end user what our end user will get so yeah of course kind of this yeah okay so how much you rate yourself in uh, out of 10 in angular and java so in angular it will be around 6 or 7 In Java, it will be seven point five. Yeah. Okay. In Angular, yeah. so you are working as a backend more than frontend, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, yeah. Now I am working as a backend developer. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, okay, we can start with Java, right? Yeah. And yeah. then we yeah. will move to JavaScript and Angular JS. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, in uh, in your opinion, mm. why we have multi-threading in Java? Like because JavaScript are single-threaded. As you are yeah. uh, full stack developer, you know JavaScript and Java both, right? So JavaScript yeah. are single-threaded, hain. Huh? and why java is multi threaded so in my current project hmm. we are we have one application which we have in multi threading so there what i saw like it is kind of we are dealing with hmm. 300k records okay so for first 150k records hmm. we have created one thread hmm. and for the second 150k records we have created second thread so okay. it is like parallel execution is going on for hmm. both the records and and after that we have to insert that in our database so in sql you can maximum you can insert 1048 or something 1024 records at a time right so using multi threading we can create suppose you can create 10 threads of it and it will like we can insert that uh, data in our sql query so what i found hmm. through multi threading we can do parallel execution and if suppose in our project we had a user case that we have to insert that record hmm. in sql uh, in that our db but max to max through sql you can insert 1024 only so we can create 10 or 12 threads hmm. and that will do the insertion process so it will like instead of waiting for 124 records we inserted again we have to wait again so we can create parallel threads and it will insert it so it is about when we have a large amount of data to deal with right yeah, yeah, so then yeah, we can use the multi threading thing 
yeah that's good that's why java is using in a enterprises application because mm. they have yeah. millions of record at a time okay. yeah yeah okay so why java is language independent platform independent sorry uh, so like java java if if any code that we wrote in java hmm. after that it will be compiled to dot class file okay. now i can directly share that dot class file to if suppose i created a program to hmm. add two numbers right. and i i compiled it dot class file hmm. now if suppose i have windows my hmm. friends want to run that dot class file hmm. so he just have to install that jvm and java will dot class file like java has jvm and then JD, jdk is con- like completely it will contains yeah, everything no, mm. yeah so in mac also just with that dot class file he can run it he don't need to like again do the coding so platform independent why we call it is like we can write the code once and we can run it anywhere either it is windows linux or mac so mainly it is like when we compile it to the compile class can be run it anywhere means in any environment either it can be mac or like linux so java provide that feature okay okay so there is a composition and inheritance what is the difference okay. between them composition i'm not aware like okay. i'm uh, inheritance i know hmm. if, if if inheritance is a property hmm. through which we can get the methods and properties of hmm. any class so in java multiple inheritance is not there mm-hmm. yeah how so we can I, achieve multiple inheritance yeah. so if we want to achieve multiple mm. inheritance then we can create interface okay see java we can't extend more than one class but uh, we can implement more than interface more than one interface so through interface we can implement multiple inheritance yeah okay so you can inherit any class right yeah how we can make that class not to be inherited by any so other we can class make, yeah we can make that class as final then we will not be able to inherit it okay and uh, suppose that if i uh, created that class with the final keyword what yeah. is the purpose of then uh, that class how where we can use that if we are not inheriting another class so final hmm. as far i know like there is a singleton design pattern right so yeah so right. if i want there should be only one class we should only use in time in our entire application we should only use the one instance of that class so for creating that we use a constructor will also be final class will also be final right. so maybe because of this singleton design pattern hmm. so singleton design pattern as you are talking about it's it is yeah. a, it is a thread safe or not so singleton design pattern uh, will create it will create only one class so thread safe thread safe means um, if suppose two threads are trying to access right. it this is the but, thread safe uh, hmm. yeah so i don't think so it is it is thread safe yeah because only one thread will be able to access at one time how yeah so if uh, if suppose uh, one thread is trying to access it will give the same it will give the same object and second for second thread also it will give the same object right so that mean it is not thread safe okay means thread safe means only one should be able to only one, one thread, thread at a time can access the object or you can say the instance of the class so this is the thread mm-hmm. safe thing okay and for making okay. that thread oh, safe what we can synchronize. do synchronize synchronize we can do yeah 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 right that is the thing actually okay yeah. about that single turn design pattern it, it is a design yeah. pattern so yeah. I, uh, do you know any other design patterns apart so, from that i am not that much aware of design pattern but i know factory design pattern is there mm. single turn design pattern is mm. there yeah mostly to but uh, i am i did not much deep dive into this design pattern but uh, okay. i have to I have to yeah okay Okay. what is the difference between local and instance variables local and instance variable so local variable if suppose we have declared a variable mm-hmm. inside a method once the execution of that that method will be done mm-hmm. then that variable is like uh, java garbage collection will be command it will like will not be able to access that variable now if suppose we have created a variable mm-hmm. in class level so whenever the instance of that class will be created will be able to access that variable so the scope of that will be from that entire class uh, like class life cycle mm-hmm. so it is like class level variable is instance level variable local variable means method level variable okay right it's great okay why strings are immutable in java so, and what yeah, is immutability yeah immutability first like if if suppose i am declaring uh, if if suppose i am declaring a string mm-hmm. string a equal to ram i declared 
and again i declared a string b equal to ram now it will create only one string that is ram in he that is string constant pool and a will also point to that ram b will also point to that ram if suppose i am changing ram to something i did a equal to ram plus something i did i changed it mm-hmm. so even my b is also pointing the, to that ram only so it is like i have changed one variable but my second variable value also got changed so for this java does not provide the feature of string immutability it, because it will like mm. diff- it, it will like uh, if, if i am changing any variable variable value so mm. it is directly pointing b is also pointing it so our b variable value will also be changed mm. so because of that java does not provide immutability and immutability you asked what is immutability mm. means after creating a variable mm-hmm. we can't change it either we can like a equal to a plus something we can do it we can reassign it but how we can't change the whatever got declared okay. so okay. see i am not that mm. much good in definition mm-hmm. but i can give you the practical yeah okay kind so of thing, yeah. and you are saying practical okay yeah. so string is thread safe string is thread safe so if suppose thread safe means only if one string should be able to access it if suppose i declared Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, but I I'm giving you the yeah. hint. There is a string yeah. builder and string buffer. Yeah. Ha, huh, yeah, string hmm. builder and string buffer. Just let me remind once string buffer. I think string buffer builder is thread safe, string hmm. buffer is not thread safe. Just think about it. Okay, string builder both are immutable, both are mutable, but only difference is this immute uh, thread safe. builder is thread safe buffer is thread safe that's okay. why the name is string buffer it has right okay okay, okay. not the issue not the, not the issue mm, yeah. okay yeah. so what is marker interface so marker interface mm. if suppose we define an interface and we don't have anything n- neither any method declaration so that is marker interface and the use of marker interface it is like i'll give you one practical implementation mm. if suppose i am i'm like coming to my office mm. and i have my id card so i can directly come inside my office and i can work right. but if i don't ha huh, if i don't have my id card mm. it will be like i won't be identified as an employee of this so marker interface it is like we are marking that interface mm. so that in a run time java have to provide the implementation for that so it is a kind of like we are making it uh, so that java can identify that there will be no any method declaration in it and we just at the run time java you have to provide the implementation for this so yeah okay okay what is the difference between final and finally keyword final and finally yeah okay so if suppose we are uh, declaring any variable or method hmm. with final keyword hmm. then we can't we can't change it so we just have to it is like final we just it, if we def, if you want to define any constant in our application mm. then mostly we use this final keyword now finally finally comes in try catch and finally block so if if suppose we wrote something in our try and catch but we want that after that finally finally will be executed every time only when it will not be executed when we do system dot exit so finally is a block it will Will it will be executed every time when we do try and clutch? So okay. this this is the basic is difference. difference. Yeah. So yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Do you know about exception handling? So exception handling, uh, yeah, but not much. Yeah, but uh, we okay. can. Okay. What other yeah. t- uh, types of exception we have? So uh, one is uh, uh, exception handling. Just a second. Uh, runtime not come. Runtime compile time will not be there. And and and. like i'm not able to recollect it exception handling it was like just a second what was that okay i think hmm. day before yesterday only like me and my friend were discussing on it but uh, i i forgot okay. it okay there is a two types of exception handling and types of exception is actually yeah. Yeah. checked exception and unchecked exception unchecked okay yeah hmm. yeah right so do you know any yeah. like any example for that checked exception and unchecked exception in java 
like you can define these are the checked exceptions mm -hmm. which is checked at a compiled that, time yeah that, right? yeah checked exception like file not file not found can be checked exception how so if suppose i am mm. uh, i am trying to access one file mm. but that file is not there right so yeah at that time of compile only it will like huh? it is also possible like uh, java will force you to add the try catch block at the site yeah. because it is possible the file that may be file. deleted or removed yeah. from that source yeah. so that's why yeah. they are forced to add try catch block mm -hmm. and throws to add that file not found exception right yeah. so there is a and lots of type of exception arithmetic yeah. operate arithmetic exception yeah. right invalid input yeah. and there is a divided by zero divided yeah. by zero there is a much, yeah. uh, many types of exception okay no no issue mm -hmm. okay let's move to collection frameworks do you know yeah. about collections yeah yeah okay can you please explain the unit of java so explain the yeah, unit this of unit of java this is a unit actually of java uh, yeah language, okay right? so mm -hmm. collection frameworks provides the power so that we can if suppose we want we want to play with data mm -hmm. so it provides the optimized way so that we can save like we can save the data we can do any operation in our data mm -hmm. uh, so it, it provides the optimized way to save store or manipulate the data right. so like mostly we have a type list list is there set is there stack mm -hmm. is there map is also there but map is not part of collection framework mm -hmm. we we learn it as a part of collection framework but if you we'll go like if you we'll import map it will not come from that collection framework package right but yeah okay so what is array list and linked list in java so, yeah so array list if suppose we want to store any data which will be like um, array list uh, if if suppose we want to store any data that should be in a uh, first data then second data then third data so it will be like uh, and uh, how will i explain array list okay let's let me explain linked list so linked list through link list we can uh, in array list no just a second list. No issue. yeah so in link list we'll have data and in second node we'll have the uh, address of second node means we are in link list we are storing data with the address of second node hmm. but in array list it will be like if suppose we declared array list of integer hmm. it, then after every four byte we'll have it, in array list it is like continuous memory loca allocation we are doing after okay. if suppose my first address is 1024 mm. then second if uh, we are adding second then it will be 1028 then 1032 but in array list it is not like continuous memory if my first address is 1024 mm. it can happen that second is at three three thousand something but in second node of that my first element it will point to that second second mm. one so this is the basic difference between array list and linked list here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So interview kind of thing. So that's why I'm not yeah, yeah. that much. Not yeah. Not issue, not issue. Yeah. Okay. So there is an iterator, iterator you can yeah. say in a Java, yeah. in a collection yeah. framework. Yeah. And also there is an enum, mm. enumeration, right? Yeah. So what are the difference yeah. between them? So iterator, if suppose we have any um, collection framework data, suppose we have linked list, array list, or like anything set map. So mm iterator provide so that we can through that object of linked list or a list we can get the iterator mm. and through iterator we can iterate over the entire map or list so it is like what will be the next value we can get it but enumeration it is like we have defined some fixed value if suppose like we have defined monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday so it is like iterator is to iterate over a collection mm. but enumeration is like if suppose i want to what will be the third day's value so we'll directly get it from enumeration so yeah this will right. be the basic difference right. here right okay so there is a hashing in java no. yeah right uh, can you please yeah. explain explain what is the concept behind hashing so hashing i'm um, see like hashing if suppose i'm defining any any variable or like any class so in java parent class is object class and in that class we have has code method which will return our has code so is it related to that hashing hashing is like okay you heard about that map and concurrent mm. map yeah yeah right? yeah in a concurrent map what data structure is implemented behind that so concurrent map 
or you can say Excellent. map hash table hash map okay so there is a hashing behind that hashing is the mm. technique where by which you can find the index where you are storing that value okay and oh, it okay. is easy to accessible because you can calculate the hashing or you can say index by the hashing technique okay yeah, yeah. Can, it means it is internal implementation of hash internal map. implementation yeah. of hash map yeah. or even it is about to when you are saving the data suppose you are mm. saving the value of a particular index okay mm. and you want to find that index and you are need to traverse complete array for finding mm. that index okay yeah, but why with yeah. the hashing thing you can easily find that element by calculating the value of or you can say converting that value to hash right okay, okay. so you Got can it, okay yeah. you can read about yeah. that no issue yeah yeah okay okay what is maps in java map so map is a cal- like map is a uh, type of data saving in which we'll save the value with key and v value pair and where key cannot be null value can be null so there like key and value both should be of a wrapper class type like integer or boolean so yeah if, okay. if you want to we store can't in, add, huh, we can't add yeah. uh, null key in map so i think one null key is allowed yes yeah one right. null key is allowed in value yeah we can uh, yeah one null key is allowed yeah okay what is the difference between set and queue stack and queue sorry stack and queue yeah so in stack it is like last in first out we follow that pattern in stack mm. whatever we are inserting in stack whatever we added in last it will come at the first but in queue first in first out so we if we stand in a queue whoever is in the front or like whoever got the first position you will get the thing first so in stack we follow first in first out policy and in any stack, example of uh, stack you know any example of real time application or like yes, real time application or any natural example okay hmm. last thing first out mm mm-hmm. real time application will be so i never used stack and queue in real time mm-hmm. but i am trying to get any real time application uh no not sure But yeah, I'll read about it. Real time application of this is check and queue. Yeah. Okay. What is the difference between synchronized keyword and volatile keyword? Yeah. So synchronized keyword. Hmm. If suppose we want that our variable or method should be should be accessed by only one thread, then we use this synchronized keyword. And volatile. I read it, but volatile. volatile i completely forgot what was mm-hmm. that volatile used in real time there is a no use of volatile right you are not processing with that yeah yeah volatile i read it the t- at the time of interview preparation mm-hmm. volatile and transient those mm-hmm. those two keywords i used to forgot yeah but uh, i'm not able to okay recall it okay yeah, no issue yeah. okay what is serialization and deserialization in java hmm. so serialization if if suppose we are dealing with any text file that we have to save it in our database mm-hmm. so if if directly will do it so serialization what it will do it will convert it to byte array so that in middle if suppose at the time of saving in middle no one can access or no one can see what we are sending it to our db so okay. for that we do serialization means converting it to byte array and then saving it and deserialization is just opposite converting that byte array to that text file so that we can understand like what we created that text file what is there in that text file yeah okay. so which java version you are working on right now so currently we are working java 17 java but 17. in my last organization i was working with java 7 okay so java 17 yeah. means it okay yeah. so have you worked with stream apis so i did not much huh, at the time of interview i was working with uh, stream mm. api yeah okay but i did not much yeah okay what is functional programming in java uh, functional programming functional programming functional programming uh, uh i read it but i am not able to recollect it okay. yeah okay. okay so at the time you are working in your company so mm. you guys are creating apis right back end mm. as you are working so in yeah. which uh, framework you are working on in java yes yeah, spring boot only we worked okay spring boot only so yeah hmm. so we can ask some questions from spring boot yeah yeah okay. so what is the difference between component and bean annotation so yeah at the rate component annotation 
through that we tell our spring application that you have to create a bean for it hmm. means in future we might use this class and be ready that we can need a bean for this and whenever we'll ask you can provide that bean now at the rate bean annotation if suppose we are using any third party api Mm. like rest template if suppose we want to call we have to call any third party api for that we use rest template now to use rest template we have to create a bean for it so what we'll do in our configuration class mm. we'll define at the rate bean with rest template so mm. now whenever we'll use at the rate rest at the rest whenever we'll auto wire rest template mm. from that configuration class it will see that we have a bean for it so it will take that object of rest template and then we can call our third mm. party api so rest bin we usually use for third party if we want to use like we have a model mapper also model mapper if you want to use model mapper then in configuration class we have to use at the rate bin so that whenever we are using model mapper it will directly fetch the bin from that configuration class and then we can use it okay what is dao class if i so are using hmm. yeah if suppose we want to uh, do any operation which is related to our database hmm. like any insert or update or any fetching from data db hmm. then we use dao classes so for that we have at the rate repository annotation okay yeah okay this is the kind of thing okay yeah okay what is the use of at the rate repository class so so uh, see at the rate com- huh. yeah at the rate component is a stereotype annotation hmm. but at the rate controller hmm. at the rate service at the rate repository this provide what extra feature this three uh, annotation provide like at the rate controller means mostly in this class we are dealing with controller like rest api handling whatever call will be there will handle here at the rate service means all the business logics will be written here and at the rate repository means all the all the dao related logic will be written here so it like component is stereotype on the top of this we have created this three annotations to specify the use of this class yeah okay what are mappings we have for http methods http mapping means methods I methods okay means put or like okay so we have put we have their get we have then up uh, for put get mapping post mapping put yeah. mapping delete mapping yeah, yeah. Right. okay so there is a two types of or you can say there is a types of uh, get mapping we have like yeah. when we are getting the input from the user or value from the mm-hmm. user there are two mm-hmm. types of getting the value what are they two types of getting the value like I it is not. there is a get mapping right and mm-hmm. if you want to get the uh input from the user hmm. right so how we will do that suppose you need to write a get mapping in a controller rest hmm. controller hmm. right hmm. and there is a two uh, like there is a value we can find in a slash right okay so uh, yeah. at the rate so there are two annotation at the rate path variable yeah and yeah and, and one more request param so if, if suppose any json file or something is coming which we want yeah yeah okay. which we want our pojo class should be mapped with that yeah Okay, so you have uh, um, you can write some code right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I can. Please uh, share the screen. Just yeah. to create a post controller. Okay, okay. add that uh, simple uh, create a post controller. Nothing more than it. And okay. add the class and uh, like user class. You are creating a user and write some service method. Okay. Yes. Okay. So. So I have one application created here. I have, I have shared my screen. You yeah. are able to see right? Yes. 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 Okay, so this address service only. Yeah, no need to run it. Control. You can easily create a class, or, okay. or you, even you can yeah. use a notepad. Not an issue. Just okay. need to add okay. that code. Okay. Yeah. I'll create a notepad only then. Hmm. So, at the rate rest controller, we can write controller also. Yeah, yeah. No, like, I say you can write controller. no issue, but uh, yeah. even you can write uh, uh, post mapping directly. Request mapping. Hmm. Request mapping. I'm providing some post API. and this is okay have if you write this suppose there is a uh, cross origin policy right course mm-hmm. sorry yeah. course error yeah. we have right yeah. so if you so, want to remove that you can uh, what you can write yeah cross origin yeah hmm. and then we can provide from where like okay. source and even though for global mean? what we can define global we can define it in our main class of spring means if suppose no no global means global means like if you want to add every api each and every api like every sorry every ip can access this yeah, yeah right then then we can in main class so like every spring application will have one main class 
like in this this is the main class here we, we here we can add that cross array this is for complete controllers i am just saying mm. uh, you mm. can define a star there for allowing that cross origin for every ip address right okay okay this okay, okay it means not especially from if suppose local host 42 it is coming yes. not from 42 4300 also it can access okay right. Right. yeah that is the thing okay, okay. just yes. complete that uh, post yeah. controller thing no issue yeah I'll be returning response entity so mm -hmm. that I can provide the status code also. And suppose this is my test class, mm -hmm. which will be you no. Know, suppose I'll just re return a string success or fail. Mm -hmm. String string get add user string. you can okay save. because get detail will be get uh, maybe we can add use the user. get annotation. So right. mm -hmm. Request param suppose something what, was what that? it will be it yeah. is request param or request body i think ah yeah request body sorry yeah request body if suppose i want to uh, suppose this is the test class hmm. which i'll be mapping hmm. t and here i'll provide the logic for logic for service hmm. call and and whatever will whatever response I'll get from service call response from service call this that I can return response entity dot mm -hmm. I can provide the body here right. I can provide the status HTTP status like HTTP status dot HTTP status dot okay yeah okay if you as you define the okay so hmm. what is the uh, status code for this oh for okay 200 so we can do it like exception handling and all like if suppose something yeah right from, yeah. suppose you then, want to share the status code created yeah so what so is the HTTP HTTP code oh, for that 204 yeah 204 created i think and uh, what is 201 then 201 Okay, when you add the created status, it will be mm. showing 201. Okay, not the okay. issue. Okay. 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 What is okay. interceptor? Uh, interceptor, if suppose, uh, like, uh, while calling this service call, hmm. before that, we want that uh, in our something should interrupt and it should, like, for logging purpose, we use, like, aspects that we have. So, what it will do? It will, between calling this controller to service, it will like go between that it will intercept it in between that and if suppose we want to fetch like log some data so that we can use so interceptor is simply like we are intercepting between some two calls hmm. and we are getting the data kind of yeah okay so and for uh, that we have respect okay, yeah. you are saying when we have the request user is the api call then interceptor hmm. will work so what happen when we are sending the response and we need to modify after uh controller send the re response so once controller returns the response at that time we have to add something right mm. so that we can add here only oh after returning you are saying yes okay the interceptor is working on the same by the interceptor mm. you are getting the call and you are sharing the uh, returning the call okay not an issue okay okay so suppose like uh, you want to implement any security in java spring boot application okay right? yeah. how you will do that so see by default we have spring security mm that we can use or like we can use JWT token or like uh, security I did not work much but mm. uh, spring security I was creating one application so what is spring security provide now you suppose you want to hit any API so before hitting any API it will ask you for login ID and password that you can get it from that console only when you will start the spring boot application it will provide the user ID and password now user th using that user ID and password you can access that application so spring security add a layer of protection to our api so mm. that 
no one can access it without a user id or password so spring security is the easiest thing or else we can implement J json web to token jwt or like there is one new also came auth2 or like ha huh, auth2 or something okay what yeah. is authentication and authorization authentication and authorization yeah authenticated and these are two different terms authenticated you are authenticated is it authorized hmm. so hmm. Uh, i'll so if suppose mm, uh, i am uh, can i say uh, i'll give you one Haan, practical please. life but i'm yes, not yes. able to like relate it with this mm -hmm. api so if suppose i have my id card and mm -hmm. i am able to uh, explore the entire office but that is authorization i am authorized to like access the entire resources of our office but right. when it come to authenticated there mm -hmm. are some restricted entry like there are some in some suppose in this building for floor fifth or floor sixth is restricted entry so i am not authenticated to go to that fifth or sixth floor mm -hmm. so authorized means as a whole i am as a whole i am authorized to this entire premises but okay. for fifth and sixth floor it mm -hmm. should be authenticated then only i'll be able to access the resource of fifth and sixth okay. so kind of yeah there is a kind of authorization or? and authentication when you are entering mm -hmm. in the gate so yeah, yeah. they will ask for your credit uh, id card yeah. and all so this is the part yeah. of authentication okay. yeah okay. yeah kind of yeah okay so this is the java spring boot thing and suppose uh, you want to add some uh, annotation to create a table in spring boot annotation okay yeah. so yeah. there is some annotations so, for uh, yeah. creating the class so, so yeah table. for that yeah hmm. for that we use at the rate entity and in that entity we can provide the name also what table it should so if suppose i have created a java class in that java class i have f i have defined five properties means five variables name age sex so and two more two more so if i'll annotate it with at the rate entity hmm. so now spring boot will create a table for it and if you want we can provide in that means here we can provide the name of that table also like we just have to provide name and then whatever table name that we want to create so yeah okay. this suppose i want to define some primary key in that so what yeah. annotation is so used? yeah for that we use this at the rate id annotation and then like if suppose id should be auto increment then there is a like generated value generated value okay. and then we can create time, yeah. we can create entity class without id parameter id annotation or we cannot yeah uh, i think id i think we can create id should not be the mandatory thing in yeah we can create i think yeah okay try that and then answer me okay. about that yeah okay. okay yeah next you can try yeah. after some time no issue yeah okay because you for that you need to create a spring boot application then there is a table mm. and all that okay. yeah yeah suppose i want to define my data source property mm. in spring boot yeah. project where i can define yeah. that so there we have application dot properties file where we have to define the port of our where our db is running mm. and the schema name yeah schema name. and yeah mm. like and driver also like if suppose we are using my sql then and there is yeah dialect also which dialect we are going to use and there is one more property which is like create auto or like if suppose every time the spring application will be started at that time it will create the table and at last when we are stopping our application then it will delete everything so that is create create update and th there is one not create drop and mm -hmm. there is update drop right. so it will be like yeah okay okay what is the uh, how we can write the native queries in a uh, spring boot so using at the rate query annotation if suppose we uh, like by default if we if we are using any jpa hmm. so by default it provides some features like if i want to do uh, find all or like find by name so but if suppose we have a custom implementation we want to write our custom query so for that we use at the rate query and then there we can provide native equal to true or not yeah Okay. so through this yeah how we can connect two entity tables means two like two different data sources yes. right no no two different tables data sources two. same okay two different tables you using joins only using joins no no in a spring boot application i don't want to write custom query in spring boot application i want to fetch 
so first i will call the address and then i will fetch the value of address and when i call the user at that time i will set the like a uh, value of address you are calling two different uh, database right how you yeah. can do it in yeah. one one call how can i do it in one call okay have you heard about mappings uh, mappings means one to mapping. many many to one yeah. yeah one to many many to one okay yeah got it yeah so one to many if suppose one to many will come to play if suppose a user can have uh, like multiple bank account so there it will be hmm. uh, one to many but many to one many uh, bank account will have if suppose like uh, there are five bank account hmm. it can point to like one user so this is one to many and many to one so but mapping i did not work much with one to many and many to one so currently i am creating one application like i was working on my own there i might i might be using it but uh, okay 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 so i think uh, you work with any transactional annotation at the rate transactional annotation so at the i like in my last project i have seen it at the rate sorry like at the rate transaction just yeah yeah, yeah sure no issue so if suppose we we are doing any query if suppose we are trying to insert anything but in middle something happened and my transaction did not completed so at the rate transactional annotation annotation it will like provide you that feature if suppose incomplete transaction happened so mm-hmm. it will roll out the complete like incomplete transaction means there will be nothing inserted in our table so through at the rate transaction annotation we are making sure that when transaction is complete then only commit it or else complete like roll out that changes okay okay one last question about java and spring yeah. boot like yeah. uh, have you worked with microservices architecture yeah microservices yeah Can in my last explain? Yeah, yeah yeah so microservices so uh, earlier we used to have monolithic but now microservices is like if suppose we have two applications uh, first one is like suppose a user service and second is address service so uh not address service i'll keep the example of hmm. if suppose let's go to flipkart now we know at the time of sale mm-hmm. user will do more payment mm-hmm. so if if suppose in a monolithic if suppose the entire flipkart is in monolithic architecture so mm-hmm. just to increase the payment like what will be that instance of payment we have to replicate the entire flipkart means mm-hmm. there will be like uh one flipkart instance is there again we have created one more again we have created one more but in microservices what we will do we'll create one uh, microservices for flipkart and second one mm-hmm. will be for payment now in sale days we know that payment will there will be more load in payment so we have created 10 instance of payment services right. so it will be like uh, we are saving our resources so yeah this this is the microservices kind of yeah, architecture yeah okay can you please uh, stop screen sharing yeah yeah okay yeah okay great okay this is about the microservice architecture okay yeah. let's move to javascript right yeah yeah okay in javascript like uh, what is anonymous function anonymous function uh, no idea javascript i did not mark much okay. i i was uh, working that only when it comes to like uh, uh, and uh, ui side like i did not deep diver like deep java diver. in javascript yeah okay okay, okay. Yeah. what is two uh, there is a binding in yeah. angular js yeah right can you yeah. please two. explain that yeah so binding if suppose we want to show anything in ui that we are fetching it from a rest side mm, so right. that is one way binding that is we are just getting it from you backend and mm. we are showing it but we have two way binding also means mm. whatever user will type it will be saved in in our local variable whatever we have created mm. and whatever 
if we are updating that variable from backend, that will be seen to user also. So this is two-way binding. So for achieving two-way binding, we use ng model. Yeah. Okay. You are uh, okay. So have you created yeah. any project in Angular JS previously in your yeah. company? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you yeah. please explain that? So. Uh, in our means our my my project or like any project that I have created any project that you created yeah so you I, I have created a simple employee service hmm. so it was like basically it will add an employee get all the employee or hmm. get any specific employee hmm. or delete an employee yeah okay, it was so like okay. employee management yeah UI okay. was not that much enriched but our functionality was this yeah okay what is what is one way binding and two way binding difference between them so one way binding means we are hmm. only getting the data and we are showing it to user. Hmm. If user will change it, it will not reflect it in our that. If suppose hmm. uh, there is an input time and for that input, we have a variable which will be updated if user will do anything. So in one way binding, it will not be updated every time if user is doing anything. Hmm. But in two way binding, hmm. if user will update anything in real time also, it is the variable value is getting updated. And if anything is coming from backend, hmm. at the real time, user is also able to see it. So it is kind of that, yeah. Okay. So I think, yes, there is a navigation in AngularJS. In a every yeah. front-end language, mm -hmm. we have navigation. Yeah. So how yeah. we can maintain in the AngularJS? So routing, kind of routing? Yes, yes. Navigation, navigation, routing, this is the kind of yeah. thing. If a user wants yeah. to navigate one page to second page, so you can say routing in a AngularJS. Yeah. yeah. So for that, we hmm. have uh, routing. That's this happened if I not work in mm -hmm. Angular for one or one or one and a half months. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so routing, we had one app.routing.ts file. So there we have to provide the path and which according to this path, which component should be rendered. So this this is the basically routing. If like if suppose user is hitting mm -hmm. slash something, then this component will be rendered. Mm -hmm. And if we want, if we want, we can mm -hmm. do the child also. Like mm -hmm. if suppose this is my parent component mm -hmm. and we want after that parent component, mm -hmm. child component should also come. Means yeah. if suppose e user, e this ID is suppose slash ABC, mm -hmm. then slash XYZ, mm -hmm. be child, children component. So while defining that, we use child and then we define the, uh, uh, I, uh, what will be that uh, address and uh, that is specific component. So uh, yeah. This what is, is like interpolation in Angular, Angular JS? Interpolation. Mm -hmm. So uh, if suppose we have any variable in backend, mm -hmm. uh, means we, we, we have any variable and that we wanted to show in UI. So for that we use double curly braces and that is interpolation. Yeah. Okay. How we can call the APIs in Angular JS? So for that we have mm -hmm. HTTP, HTTP, what was that HTTP? What do we say that? HTTP package will be correct word or? Yeah, yeah. So, right. yeah, so HTTP mm. package. So in that we have method, put method. In that we have to, if suppose there is a put method. So first we are calling that put method and we will we have to pass which APIs it should hit and what we should pass. So this is like as there there is a HTTP package which provide put method or like get method. And through that we can call API, yeah. Okay. How you handle yeah. the load balance, load on that AngularJS application? Load means I did not get Like it. suppose there is a much load of front end, like there is a mm. heavy file which is created on uh, that part, on that uh, um, front end. Okay. Hmm. Heavy part means... Like um, there is a load, much load on front mm. end side, like API is calling well, but when you are mm. rendering the code of the AngularJS, and so mm. there is a lo much load on that. So how you will handle that? means from backend we are getting from a lot of end. data from front end from front end we are sending a lot of data to backend no no suppose that uh, there is an application in an angular mm. js okay yeah. which is loading on a browser which is okay. very uh, getting uh, too much time oh, oh it is taking much time hmm. uh, so for that we have lazy loading so what what is lazy loading so hmm. if suppose in in this screen in if suppose i am in home page Huh. And in home page, I don't want to get or fetch the content of about page or like mm. address page or like there are two, three pages. Mm. So I don't want to fetch that because mm. if I'll fetch it, it will take time and it will make my home page rendering slow. Okay. So in that, what we can do, we can provide lazy loading for that about page. Yeah. And uh, some other page. Or you can now at, uh, yeah. yes. And you can also yeah. optimize the images, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What is directive directives in Angular JS? There is some directives already. Yeah. So yes. so if if suppose we want to 
uh, manipulate the behavior of our dome means if 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 want to do any dome manipulation means if in ui we have something at mm. that time uh, if i'll do anything in dome it will be real time only it will be updated in our application so if i want to change anything mm. so for that we use directives so and the, the, like we have a structural directive and then we have component directives mm. and there is one more i think structural is there component directives there attribute dire- directives yeah. and all yeah right. yeah yeah okay. yeah okay so one last question from about angular js what is yeah. injector inject oh so if suppose i want to inject means we are if suppose we have a dependency of different class mm-hmm. in our angular application mm-hmm. so for that we use at the rate inject mm-hmm. like, like we we have to call our backend services so for that we inject our that means we'll have our service class in our angular application mm-hmm. from there we are calling all the api mm-hmm. so we'll inject our service class in our component okay. if suppose we want to do any backend call in that component so for that we use our we use at the rate inject and we'll uh, create the object of that service class and then we can call the method yeah this is about the angular js so as yeah. you mentioned you also know about some uh, pipelines things cloud yeah, services yeah. right yeah. okay so just explain i am not asking any question about that just explain yeah. the aws services you know so aws mostly i worked with ec2 instance hmm. yeah ec2 instance i used to like we started up and yeah mostly ec2 instance but here we are using gcp so here i got to know about this bucket uh, google buckets. cloud storage and big queries hmm. GCS yeah, and big queries, yeah. Okay, so uh, you are created. You are using SVN, like uh, for system yeah. version version control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah here we are using Git. In my last project, I have worked with SVN. Yeah. Okay, okay. So can you please tell me about Jenkins? What you have done and what you are using in that? Yeah, so Jenkins, like we we have created around twenty thirty jobs in mm-hmm. which we had jobs for build, mm-hmm. like our for our UI build. For UI deployment, for REST, and for REST deployment, and we had jobs for log analysis. Like we used to fetch the logs of production, and we have created a Java application, mm. which what it will do will provide the uh, logs in raw form, means the .txt file. Mm. It will go line by line, and if suppose it found an exception, so it will create an Excel sheet out of it. Like file not found exception is occurred on this this time, and there are total fifty occurrence of this file not found exception. Okay. so yeah i have created job for that also mm-hmm. and we were using some remote desktop okay. so we had so for accessing client data mm-hmm. we can't directly access from our local desktop local laptop so we got out 19 to 20 remote desktop but issue was that sometimes remote desktop will work slow or it will be shut down because of performance and all accessible issue so, yeah yeah, right. yeah so for that what we used to do we have created an appli java application what it will do it will go and ping every rental Mm-hmm. so if we are getting response from that means it is up so we have created an application and we used to run that application every day and at last we used to create an excel sheet which will like left side it will have all the rental name all mm-hmm. means all the remote desktop names whether it is on or not how many like total what's the total memory and how free memory is there so mm-hmm. yeah i have worked on that also okay 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 shubham that is from my side so if you want to ask any question yeah first of all thank yeah. you thank you so much like uh, uh, really i wanted to like this this will help me a lot because mm-hmm. yeah, i what i felt after joining ford that again after two or one or one and a half year i have to switch and i have to go to services yeah. because i want to learn more and explore more right. until five or six years i have to explore everything mm-hmm. not everything i can't explore everything but mm-hmm. uh, whatever i can do i'll i'll try to explore more so right. this this will yeah this will be really helpful and mm-hmm. just just like if if i can do any like contribution whatever you are doing if i also wanted to do any contribution if if i'll be able to like if you will give me that opportunity it will be really helpful for me also and yeah. thank thank you so much for giving this opportunity yeah. 